Dividend Growth Investors, bonjour. My name is Mike Yeru. I'm the founder of Dividend Stocks Rock, and I'm also a passionate investor with this YouTube channel. And today we are talking about possibly the best retailer in the world. This is the third largest retailer, the 11th largest company in the Fortune 500, with a company that has a market cap of $250 billion. Most importantly, this is my latest purchase from uh, like three, four weeks ago. I'm talking about Costco, thicker C-O-S-T. Then again, you're going to tell me, but Mike, not another low yield, high growth stocks. Well, I'm sorry, dear investors, but I just cannot help it. Uh, take a moment to look at this beautiful dividend triangle. So as you can see over the past 10 years, the stock price increased by almost 400%, but it was fueled by one of like the most stable and pretty much equivalent dividend triangle I can see. So revenue increased 120%, earnings per share increased by 193%, and the dividend increased by 229, plus we add three special dividend payments. So again, yes, 0.75 yield, but when you consider those kind of crazy trend where no matter what happens in the economy, Costco find ways to grow their revenue improve their profit and grow their dividend. So Costco has been on my radar for a long time, but the question remains, and I'm sure that you struggle with that. Is it the right time to pull the trigger? Because Costco trades at a disgusting PE ratio. Most of the time it's close to 40 times the earnings. So you're looking at it and then between the, the forward PE ratio and the PE ratio, you're between like 35 to 40 you really want to buy a stock 40 times their earnings per share? Yeah, I know, kind of crazy. So I was putting Costco on the shelf like year after year. It kind of like remind me of how long I waited before I pulled the trigger on Visa where it was on my radar since their IPO, but it was just always overvalued until I finally take the move in 2017. And today I've doubled my, my, my value and I'm very happy I've done it. Yet, I bought it at an overpriced. So this is what I decided to do with Costco, but not before one thing. You know, when you analyze a company, you have two things that you have to look at. The numbers and the narrative. So quantitative and qualitative analysis. So I got that part with the numbers. They're just amazing, right? But for the narrative around Costco, at first I thought, that's just a retailer. That's nothing more than a retailer. And then I listened to an amazing podcast. I'm going to put that in the show notes. It's called acquired.com. And those guys, they just go through the entire history of a company to explain you where it's coming from, where it is and where it's going. And then I got the full narrative behind Costco. So let's take a look at the business model. So I'm not going to make you learn anything here by telling you that Costco has like a warehouse type of retailer business model. Most of their warehouses are in the US and that is one thing that is quite interesting about them is not only they still have room to grow in the US, but they can grow outside of it and export their business model elsewhere. I think that it could be a great opportunity for Costco to replicate what they've done in the US, a little bit more in Canada, but now they can go to China, they could go to India, and they could just expand across the world. So out of, two, of 852 warehouses, most of them are in North America, opening the growth for a lot, the growth opportunities outside North America. So there are two things I found fascinating about Costco. The first one is the limited amount of item per warehouses. So instead of offering you thousands and ten thousands of items, they limit themselves under 4,000 items. What's the point here? Well, the point is to carefully pick each of them to make sure that you have a great margin, but also 
to go see your supplier and say, I'm going to be your biggest client. So as opposed to Walmart, that is a bigger retailer, but they buy from everywhere to and, and they buy all kinds of stuff. Costco is coming to the table with their supplier and say, you know what? We're negotiating a fair deal. We're gonna pass that value to our members and you're gonna get me that best deal because I'm going to become your largest client. So be building this relationship with suppliers and trying to grow as they grow at the same time makes it quite special. The second items I find very special about Costco is obviously their membership model. So by having a membership, it helps them to actually segment their clientele. So they keep customers that are usually having a higher level of income because they buy in bulk, they have to pay for a membership, and they will come back more often because of that membership. What happens during a recession? Well, those guys already have a higher income, so technically they probably have more education and they have more ability to find another job if they're getting laid off. So in both worlds, they still have a lot of money and a lot of flexibility, so they go back to Costco anyway and they continue to buy in bulk because it's a recession. So in both cases, regardless if it's going well or if it's not going well, Costco has the right type of client. On top of that, they show a crazy amount of renewable rate. 93% of members are renewing their membership year after year, so almost no churn, and you build that base of clients that keeps coming back, buying more and more at Costco. So with that kind of narrative, when you go back to the numbers and think about it, now it makes a lot more sense to say, well, yeah, well, probably this company is going to try for a very long time. So I went back to see the numbers because I was still not convinced. I went back on dividend stocks rocks and I pulled out the dividend triangle analyzed growth rate for revenue, earnings and dividend. To my surprise, everything was double digit. Then it started to make sense to say, yeah, I'm going to pay a high multiple for a business that is able to grow their revenue, grow their profit and grow their dividend double digit over the past five years. Since I want to make sure that the company was still on a good streak, I went also to look at the dividend profile on Dividend Stocks Rock because we have stock cards on more than 1,100 companies. So I just pulled out the, the, uh, the dividend profile here in terms of number and two things strikes me, this strike me. The first one, the super low payout ratio. So the company is investing most of its money to grow the business, not to pay me, which is great. So it explains also why the yield is so low. And then when you look at the one year, the three years, and the five years dividend growth rate, they're not only stable, the best one was the last year. So when you look at that, you're really looking at a double digit dividend grower that actually has plenty of room to keep up with that dividend growth policy. So again, looking at the dividend triangle trends, looking at the numbers, looking at the dividend profile, I'm starting to get very excited here. Unfortunately, nothing is perfect in this world and while I, would, I had the guts or I have the conviction to pay 40 times the earnings when I made my purchase three weeks ago, there are some flaws at Costco. The first one is they pretty much miss the both with the e-commerce. It seems that it's not affecting them right now and they're like slowly moving towards having an e-commerce platform. About 6% of their sales are coming from that. It's still not big as opposed to, as compared to uh, other big retailers such as Walmart. So missing the boat on this, is it an opportunity? Is it because they just focus on their warehouse based model? Maybe it is, but still, I'm kind of like a bit concerned they might miss another boat in the future. So far, it does work well for them, but still, I have some reserve here. And finally, most importantly, when you buy a stock at such a high valuation, you have to be ready to be patient. I'm buying Costco not to see it surge in my portfolio for the next 12 months, but rather the next 12 years. So I don't really mind how much I pay right now because I'm a long-term investor and two things could happen in the next five years. Maybe the stock price will, will drop again and it creates a better opportunity, which I will miss. 
or the stock price will continue to go up and then I, was, I, I would curse that I should have invested in 2023. Overall, over the past two years, since January of 2022, so it's been 21 months now, stock price hasn't moved that much. A little bit up, a little bit down, but so far it's pretty much flat for 24 months. It's pretty rare that Costco reached that kind of level, and this is another reason why I decided to pull the trigger. Now, if you're looking for more stock ideas like this one with a very solid dividend triangle, so companies that are not only thriving but has a robust balance sheet and will share the wealth with their investors, I suggest that you download our DSR Rockstar list. So the Rockstar list, you can download it in the link below. It's an Excel spreadsheet, so you put your name uh, and your email address. We're gonna send you the link to you so you can download it. And we update the list every month. Within the list, you'll find a bunch of metrics, but most importantly, we're filtering our database just to pull out only companies showing a positive dividend triangle. This means that you start your research with only companies that shows revenue growth, earnings growth, and dividend growth over the past five years. So it's obviously not just all buys and you close your eyes, but at least it's a pretty good start to start your research. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up, follow the channel, and make sure to tell me in the comment if you are like me and you're willing to pay for quality. Let me know what you think about Costco or any overvalued companies. I might do another video on one of those suggestions. And until the next one, that will happen next Thursday. Don't forget to stay invested.